Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is James Regan, and I'm going to go through some stuff around um, Windows 10 and um, how you go about optimizing it, etc. Because it's uh, it's a little bit different to uh, to Windows 7. So, first of all, just a quick question: Has anyone else done a Windows 10 deployment? So a couple. That's right. Okay, so um, I work uh, for a company called Zenopy, who are a Citrix partner in Dublin, and um, I work there as a virtualization architect. I've been working with Citrix for about 11 years, and uh, I, um, as I saw on the first screen, I've uh, been awarded the status of uh, Res RSVP, and I've been certified with all the various different Citrix things. So, um, basically, the the, the whole, all of today is kind of based around um, a Windows 10 project I recently completed and kind of some of the lessons I've learned about Windows 10 as I've gone along, so I hope that they're uh, helpful to everyone. So, um, so it's just a, it's kind of what we're going to go through and um, yeah, so, yes. So the, um, the the customer it was uh, it's a third level college in Ireland. Um, they have about 500 concurrent users. They were using VI. Yes, you put the microphone. microphone yeah. Sorry. You speak English. <laughs> oh, Hello. Is that better? No. no. <laughs> Okay, so as I said, before Remco interrupted me. <laughs> Have you got a live demo? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I know you do, but I don't. Yeah, I'm pretty fucking scared about it. <laughs> okay, so as I said, uh, they were, the customer was using VDI in a box, uh, Windows 7, VDI desktops, um, like Office 2013, and they have some really strange apps that, you know, when we do all our benchmarking, etc., the not apps that you know they've got Visual Studio. They're basically developers. That's the only word for them because there's so much bad stuff on there. So uh, we went in to kind of sit with the customer, and they said we want to go with Windows 10 and Office 2016, and we we're like, Are you sure you want to do that? Um, so. But they pushed for it, um, so uh, I said, yeah, okay, that's fine. It was um, my first Windows 10 project, so I said, okay, let's have a look at what we can do, etc. So the solution we came up with was um, on Zenda Stop 7.8 uh, VDI edition. We were going to use Res Workspace 1 2016 because we wanted to try and can the start menu, which I'll get to in time. And, um, Windows 10 Enterprise. So I thought, okay, that's fine. Windows 10 Enterprise, and then I discovered this. What in the sweet Jesus is this? It's like, so I, you know, in the past I choose Enterprise, whatever. No, this is what we now have from Microsoft. <laughs> so you've got uh, basically three main, um, what they call branches, um, and it's basically all around the various feature sets and when they're released. So you can see, so current branch, you can see when it came out, it's, at, um, you know, it's, it's come out in November, I think they're going to do like four updates a year, so um, I've got this, it's supposed to meet the demands of all their various different customers, but the, the problem, one of the problems is, um, especially when you're using something like um, Res or something like that for controlling your desktop, as soon as a new one comes out with this, it breaks your configuration, so it's great. So thank you, Microsoft. Um, but so the vendors are, are uh, such as Res are like having to you know um, commit to like 90 days from the release of uh, the latest branch. I think they they said they will have um, be able to support it. So it's something to bear in mind when you're um, deciding on what version to go on because on when the, the features come out because it, it will if you're using Res or AppSense or anything like that it will probably. Break so, um, so I'm just going to a bit more detail about these. So, as I said, you've got this: uh, you've got your current branch, your current branch for business, and then your long-term service branch. 
it's the current branch, you know, they bring out, it's when they release all the new kind of features and um, yeah, it's meant for developers and stuff like that. Anyone who was considering going with current branch for an enterprise project, good luck, because I wouldn't even come near it, because it's just too much. And um, yeah, so kind of um, where, for my particular project, we went with the current branch for business. Um, it's, you know, they updated, I think it's four months, but you can actually, and I did with group policy, um, disable the feature updates, so um, for I think the longest duration is like eight months or so, um, because I didn't really want to have to go and redo my desktop every couple of months, so and that's, if you use the current branch, that's the kind of thing you're going to be facing. The, um, the long-term service branch is interesting in that, as I said, you can see there, Microsoft is saying it's only for special purposes. Um, now. Um, you know, they're saying that why it might be interesting for some companies is they're only going to have feature updates every two or three years, so if you want stability, it's kind of something to look at. And um, I know the latest LTSB that just came out, um, James Rankin, who um, is kind of, <laughs> has, um, you know, a hell of a lot of experience with Windows 10 and has written a eight part blog series on Windows 10. I recommend if you're doing Windows 10 projects, go and read it because it's just phenomenal stuff, the amount of stuff that James has put together. So he has said that the new LTSB version is actually um, enterprise ready um, as it strips out a lot of the stuff I'm gonna go through um, already so you don't have to go away and run you know, PowerShell scripts and whatever to get your, um, get your desktop. So. Um, so out of the box, this is what the, the uh, Microsoft Windows 10 desktop looks like. Like, if you can just see it there yourself. Netflix, Candy Crush, what the, what enterprise wants that kind of shit in their environment? So, um, so yeah, that's kind of what, where it starts out because we have this one operating system that you know, Microsoft doesn't do kind of pared down versions, well apart from the um, LTSB, but you know, standard, that's what it looks like. And you know, I show that to my customer and they went, no, that's not what we want. So so um, so just digging a bit deeper into kind of the uh, operating system. So all of that um, lovely modern apps which you know we get from Microsoft. Um, there are two main areas where um, these exist, and we can, you know, get. We need to um, tame them, to, so to speak. So, uh, so as you can see, this is the uh, system maps. You can see it all nice there in the, in the Windows folder. So, you know, there's uh, oh gosh, Edge, and all that kind of nonsense. That so Xbox. Yeah, everyone needs Xbox and Enterprise Desktop. So. Um, so yeah, um, so the Windows uh, folder, you can browse by um, from Explorer, but um, um, you don't have permissions, so um, do not, under any circumstances, try and take um, control of that folder, because you will just break all your modern apps and in turn break your OS, basically, and if you haven't like snapshot it or something like that, you're going to have to start from scratch, so don't take up ownership of that folder because you may think that you want to to be able to uh, disable all those apps, etc. Don't. So, <laughs> um, as you can see, there's like over 80 of them. So, you know, how uh, how that can uh, affect your login times, etc. So, uh, yeah. Um, so you do want to get rid of them. So, you can. So how do you tame your Windows? How did I tame this Windows test stuff? So, it's PowerShell. Um, so this is a PowerShell script that will um, remove some of them and go, great, I've removed them all. No, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> um, that kind of, you'll see, from that script and you'll see kind of it's so much red that you haven't actually, you know, you have not stripped out half of the uh, modern applications at all. So what can you do? Well, as I said, um, this is a, a like a, Again, James Rankin for this. He has had a script. Um, 
And basically what it does is it renames all of the, um, uh, the uh, modern apps in the system apps folder. So that's PowerShell so far and the scripts. And then you go, OK, so I'll have a nice desktop then. Mm, yeah, you might. Which you probably won't. <laughs> so um, you know, I stripped it out. So I got rid of the modern apps, but I wanted like to have a nice, clean, start menu. So I th thought, you know, I've, I've used res, so um, I decided that I would use res to uh, do my do the rest of the kind of desktop configuration. So, so within res, um, I don't know, most people are probably familiar with res. But basically, you have the ability to, you know, produce your own start menu. So one of the things you first do is. Uh, you can replace all of the unmanaged shortcuts, so you just get presented with the applications which you're managing through Res. So, um, also you have the ability then to pin um, your shortcuts to the start menu. And if you want to use tiles, then go for it. You can use tiles, and I'm not a big fan of them. But, um, so, that was one of the ways uh, we go from there. So, you can see. There's no Candy Crush, there's no Netflix, Xbox, anything. It's, it's, it's all gone. So, uh, and you can see in terms of the way I present the applications that you know it's nice, it's clean, it's, um, it's easy to use. So, um, you know, so um, Windows 10. Um, Windows 10 has um, more telemetry and God, stuff that's like sending out your location advertisements than anything before. So um, the uh, there's uh, a lot of stuff. So you want to um, obviously you know to to be the eye environment. You want to optimize it. So you can utilize uh, the GPO and you can deliver all of these kind of uh, celebrity services that are running. Um, but that's just the services. There's also, um, um, I think it's about, say it again? It's about 25 scheduled tasks. Uh, so uh, yeah, um, there's just uh, the amount of scheduled tasks I discovered in Windows 10 and had to disable was just off the charts. And um, my desktop performance was, um, I think, 50% better by the time I finished with all the scheduled tasks. Um, so in terms of optimization, um, has everyone heard of the VMware optimization tool? Okay. So um, it's a really great tool, I have to say, um, especially for, for Windows 10. So um, now in the latest version, there is a login VSI template. And um, you, know, you can run um, and you can do an analysis of your, your operating system and it, it comes back and tells you what it's going to go ahead and disable. I, like any optimization tool, you should review it completely and you know decide some of the features it disables you might want. I think one of the ones I noticed was uh, Windows Search, which my customer wanted, so um, I had to go and untick it. But yeah, um, so it helps a lot in your kind of in the um, optimization of your um, of your desktop. Okay. Any questions so far? Um, so I suppose. Um, a couple of other things that I, you know, I noticed on, on with Windows 10 is that um, in terms of like one of the issues I, I was having when I was uh, putting the image together was I was having quite a bit of uh, really high disk utilization, and I said um, some of that was attributable to the scheduled tasks and, and that kind of thing. But it was also there was there was a couple of the features actually within Windows 10. Um, one that was um, was called. Um, Tips for from Windows, and basically I was, I was, you know, reviewing it and I see once I disabled it, like my disk utilization dropped. It's like there's so much stuff you do, really do need to be optimized. But, um, unlike, uh, well, I, you know, you optimize every operating system, but Windows 10 in particular requires optimization. Um, because one of the things you know you've seen there's 
PowerShell scripts, uh, just standard scripts, and you know, using third-party tools like Perez to, to create your start menu. So um, I'm hoping that you know someone, maybe Res, can um, you know put it all together so that you don't have to and you can do all the, op the not the optimization but the uh, customization of the start menu, etc. So. Uh, yeah. so question. Yes. Schedule tasks are yep. also in here in this same uh, tool overview. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think it does. Uh, yes, it does. Yeah, it does. It does the schedule tasks. Yeah, um, but you're better off looking at it as well manually to, to see as well. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stuff uh, around schedule tasks in particular, and you know the. And the telemetry stuff as well. Like, there's so much. Basically, you, you want to go go also. Um, the, the optimization is fine, but you want to go through the operating system and review the telemetry settings and uh, just in your golden image, etc. Because there's just so many things. <laughs> the, the one of the reasons for getting rid of all the tiles, etc., is the tiles are live, so they're constantly sending data, updating. Um, that's what I was saying about the whole. Um, why you, you have to be particular in, in what kind of uh, branch you um, pick. Because once there's a new release of a branch, say you've disabled all those applications, you have to go, it, go and do it again. So, um, yeah, so the main thing is, like, you know, I, I haven't looked at the new long term service branch release yet, so um, I want to have a look at that because it seems like it may be getting to the stage where it needs to be. So, um, yeah. I suppose. Um, okay. Any other questions? It's the, on the LTSB, um, the, I think they get rid of uh, Edge. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it gets rid of Edge and it gets rid of the uh, calendar and the clock and all, all this kind of stuff that. Yeah, yeah, it just, yeah, it, it just takes some time and. Obviously, after you've run things like this optimization tool, you then you know can look at doing benchmarking with logging VSI or something like that, and you can go back and re-optimize again. And um, it, it's just to kind of bear in mind for for your for your projects that there is kind of a lot of time will be spent optimizing and customizing the operating system, um, just because of the way it is out of the box, etc. So um, it's just. So much stuff and so much data Microsoft are <laughs> So, uh, yeah. yeah. You can, but. <laughs> what are the VMs that you went with? Sorry. How much uh, CPU? Uh, it was much, two uh, VCPU and four gigs of RAM. Okay. Yeah. Um, that was, so, um, we were running on a. Yeah. Um, and it was about. First, we were using MCS, so um, yeah, it was a catalog of about 300 VMs. Um, what do you think? So one of the things I found um, with um, my, my customer was using um, uh, Linux thin clients and they were having um, BYOD by Max, etc. So I had an issue where um, basically the people started coming to me during the, the, the kind of pilot phase and they were like, our keyboard not working. What? The keyboard's not working. So I was like, my Windows keyboard's fine. It's all good. It's like, um, that's what you get for buying a Mac. So. <laughs> it's a Windows operating system. What do you need? So what I found was um, it was actually the um, VDA, uh, the Citrix VDA, uh, the 7.8 VDA was actually causing the issue for the keyboard. So we actually ended up running um, 7.9 VDA, um, which solved the issue with the uh, the uh, Linux uh, thing clients and the uh, Macs from the keyboards not working. So it's something to bear in mind if you're uh, um, looking at using 7.8 and you're um, using a Mac, etc. So Rob Day. From seven seven to seven eight. No, I was running seven point eight, and then I updated the VDA to seven point nine. But uh, did you update before? Because we had this issue too. Okay. And we 
we just uninstalled clean the VDA and installed again and then the keyboard on the Mac is working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just went with 7.9 VDA, so we were, we were under time pressure, so we didn't do the... Uh, but that's good to know. Well, so, we so the 7.8 works. We have that bug, I think we, we started with 7.6, then yeah. we installed 7.7 7 and the keyboard won't working anymore. Yeah. And the solution was to just clean, uninstall and inst install it again. Okay. <laughs> that's good to know. Yeah. Um, so. Any other questions? Uh. What about log on times? In comparison to the, the Windows 7? Uh, I think we ended up around, at the moment we're getting around 40 seconds. So um, it is something I'm going to go back and have a look at again, because I would like to move faster. But yeah, I think it's, it's about 40 seconds. So that's another thing to, um, to mention about Windows 10. Um, you, uh, you can't use many profiles. So um, you have to either use Roman profiles or we use local profiles because these were non-persistent VDIs, so it just made sense. Um, so yeah, we've got our everyone's mandatory profiles and customized stuff. So. Um, so um, that's pretty much everything. So. <laughs> so um, let me see, um, just a couple of links here um, for, you, for you guys, if you are you know, doing a Windows 10 deployment, that, um, these are three blogs which I, I found very useful during the project, so um, check them out, and um, so there's my contact details, if you want to know any more details about the project, etc., um, feel free to reach out, uh, I'm happy to discuss it, and if you want to talk while I'm here, Happy, so, um, yeah, just refer you to go back to slide. Yes. So people taking pictures. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. No, I'll do it. I'll do it. Yes, I will. I will tweet the links after the presentation as well. So uh, you, you'll have them, and then when the when eventually when the slide decks are available, uh, you know you, you can have them as well. So um, is there anything else in the branches? Sorry, do you want to go back over the branches a bit more? Or? So I can do if you want. Yeah. No, just yeah. For you, just well, yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> 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 Well, yeah, and, and as I said, the, the latest long term does look, um, as I said, um, it does look um, more promising than the previous one. Because, but if you see there, like you know, this is what Microsoft recommends: is that the the fact that it, it's not intended for deployment on all PCs because of. Um, but then it, it depends on your own strategy. Like, um, do you care about new features, etc.? You know, I mean, a lot of these things, most companies know they don't. So um, I think, per personally speaking, I think the current branch for, for anyone is, is, is too aggressive because, um, as I said, like if you are using um, solutions like Res or anything like that, your your configurations are going to break. Us. Um, I think the when the latest curve branch came out, the, it broke the VDA, uh, the Windows 10 VDA. So um, these are all the kind of things if you are going to be really aggressive on that. But as I said, um, the current branch for business, I think, is the, is the kind of middle ground. Um, you do have to do all the kind of optimization stuff, and maybe the new LTSB is, is, is a better option. But I haven't, as I said, I haven't had a chance to look at it. So, um, um, yeah, so it's just kind of choose what is uh, the best option for your customer and um, go from there. I think, um, you know, this, as I said, like, you know, the LTSB looks, is starting to look good. Um, 
I don't know if Microsoft are going to change this statement. Um, maybe they will. But um, as I said, they're not recommending it. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't use it. So um, uh, I suppose the things around the um, the features, as I said, you you can just um, postpone the features um, by I think it's eight months by GPO, and I would definitely recommend you doing that because. Um, I think if you want to do roaming profiles, you have to go with the latest uh, current uh, yeah. branch or this latest uh, LTSB 16. Ocean. Yeah, I think you're right there. Yeah. Um, yeah, as I said, we went with local profiles and then just um, branch group to delete them and lock off. So, so yeah, because um, uh, we. Uh, yeah, I think the roaming profiles is only come in in the latest release as well. So, um, and I don't think they're bringing back entry profiles. I've heard maybe they are, but they haven't confirmed it yet. So, um, so. any other questions? Mm -hmm. So, um, just to mention it, um, there is a. Reds user group in the UK and Ireland, and the next meeting is on the 29th of November in London. Um, it's going to be all the uh, product managers and stuff from um, from um, Res and actually the guy I mentioned, James Rank, is actually giving a session on Windows 10. And the main focus of the uh, user group for this particular meeting is even the topics we got um, for roundtable discussion at the end. It was all about Windows 10, so. If you live in the UK or Ireland, or you know, just want to come to London for that day, and um, there's a link to register, and um, that's it. So thanks very much, guys. <laughs>